And then one of my other videos I mentioned, um, this little bread machine. Um, I, I picked this, this bread oven up, up at uh, a thrift store for uh, $10. Um, I didn't know if it would even work, right? You know, it's kind of like a little $10 risk. Um, but I figured that, you know, if somebody donated it to the thrift store and been conscious that it probably would work. Um, so I decided to go ahead and, and invest in it. And um, the controls are super simple. When you, eat it, you just, um, at the top, uh, select, you know, um, what type of crust you want, medium, dark, or light. And, and you can you select a manual setting if you, if you want to uh, um, create some specialty breads in it. But for just making just regular sandwich bread or morning breakfast toast or something, I mean, bread that you can slice and then toast, this thing is so simple. And I, I select a, a medium crust that comes out, um, at least so far, every time I've used it, it's only so far about a half dozen times, but I, I just, I just, when I come across something that actually works, I want to tell other people about it just, just because, um, there's so many things in this world you can buy that are just pure junk and don't work very well at all. This thing is like amazingly simple. Um, you see this little round, um, container and, and, and see the bottom in there? Um, there's just that one little blade. Um, this thing is so simple. Let me sh show you how it works. Um, you take um, one of these um, yeast packets, or you can buy a yeast jar and just measure out um, the appropriate amount of yeast. Um, each one of these packets contains an, enough for two loaves. In my opinion, it actually contains more than that, provided you're willing to be a little patient and let the yeast bloom, bloom some. But I've already made one loaf, so there's only half of the yeast left in here. So, so I'm just going to, so this is a, the appropriate amount for, for this loaf. Um, and all you do is, uh, again, you don't have to use any other containers to speak of, really. You just you, you just take take your yeast, you can see it down in there, and pour it down in, into the um, device. Now it says it says ideally in the instructions put the yeast at the at the outer edges, and and the bottom line is, is as soon as you bloom the yeast, in other words, all you do to bloom the yeast is take take like you know um, half cup or a little bit more of of, of of sugar and water, and 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 feed your yeast. Um, the yeast itself um, will then um, eat the sugars and and begin begin growing or blooming. And 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 all that all that activity as they eat the yeast is um, they're going to. Um, excrete gases, and, and the gases are what makes your bread air, aerate or, or be light and fluffy inside. And uh, so, at any rate, all you do is, is just give the yeast some, some warm water, um, not too hot, you know, kind of like um, just just slightly above room temperature even, and and just some warm water and some sugar, and. Uh, some people will add a little bit of warm milk and stuff in there too. The, the lactose um, sugars actually um, really do the yeast really do like like that. As a matter of fact, I, I'm going to do that myself. You just let it sit for you know a few minutes, three to five minutes or so. Just let the yeast go to, go to town and and fully bloom. Give, give them a chance to come to life, so to speak. All right. So I'm gonna stop recording. And in five minutes from now, I'll, I'll pick up again and I'll show you what, what you do. All right, so it's been a few minutes. Um, I just wanted to show those two boxes. Um, what I did was I'm using them to make a stand. And, and I have a humidifier um, with a grow lamp um, over my 
over my potting soil. And um, of course, ideally, you want to give them um, plants um, sunlight in, in your summertime and whatever. But this, but this way, I can grow things year round. And I usually grow um, cilantro because I, I'm, I'm partial at, since I was raised in in, in a uh, an Italian and a Mexican community. Um, I'm partial to um, Italian and Mexican cuisine and um, spicy foods, spicy cuisines. I, I, I really love the the seasonings that God has made, the, the spices, the spice of life. I'm so partial to um, really tasty food from all over the world. But but when you're, you know what I mean, poor, um, reduced, um, you can only, you know, think about that food. You really can't afford to, to buy it anymore. And so you, ha so if you can afford it, um, if you still had some money be before you reduced to poverty, um, planting your own herbs so that you still have some fresh herbs and stuff, even if it's just a little planter, um, you know, helps them improve your quality of, of diet. Anyway, so the yeast blooms, uh, and and I'm letting I I, I overheated the. Uh, rest of the wet ingredients, which is um, just a little bit of milk um, and and butter and, and, and some oil um, for the bread. So I'm letting this cool a little bit more, another couple minutes or so, um, so that it, you, you don't want it to be too hot because, you know, then you can kill the yeast. And you, 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 you don't want it to be, you know, ice cold and just a little bit above room temperature, really, you know. Um, no, no more than say around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, if it's you know too hot to, to touch, then it's definitely too hot. So you just you just I'm just going to let that cool for it's not going to hurt the yeast at all. They'll just keep they'll just keep blooming down here. Um, see how they see how they format. Maybe if I get a flashlight so you can see it better. any rate, um, you can see how it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's foaming. See how it, that means, that means the yeast are, are nice and healthy and active when it's, when it's forming a, a, a foam layer like that. See all those bubbles? So, so that's blooming the yeast, and it doesn't take very long, but I, but the more you bloom them, the, the light, lighter and fluffier your, your, your bread will be. And, and if you don't want, you know, um, your bread to be, you know, very aerated, then just don't, don't let the, um, yeast, um, bloom or, or rise as much in, in the rising process. But this machine actually automates it all for you. Um, and, and so far I've had nothing but great loves come out time and time again. So I'm, I'm actually really loving this just because of how simple it is, and I, I, there's there's no cleanup. You just you just put all the ingredients in there and press the button. I'll show you. All right, so you, you use all your ingredients. Um, your your wet ingredients, which include. Um, Typically for bread, um, about a cup of water, um, say half cup to half and half, or, or some or milk, you know, some type of lactose-based product. And again, that actually that actually is because that's ideal yeast food. Okay, um, they love those milk sugars, and uh, it does it definitely does affect the flavor of the bread. So uh, instead of just oil, vegetable oil, I'll, I'll if I have butter, um, I'll use butter instead, and 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 just melted as I'm warming the milk for, for the yeast. All right, and then, so you, all your wet ingredients, then I'm just pull right into the bottom, and, and then you just add your dry ingredients. And in this case, it's, uh, I've already put um, salt to my taste in. Um, some people like more or less salt. You know, I, I use about um, a teaspoon, no more than two teaspoons per loaf. Um, sugar. And because I, I really like that um, aeration, 
Um, I'll, I'll usually use a full tablespoon of, of sugar, um, maybe maybe a little bit more. Um, here you can see. This is actually a, a cup container, in it, and that's all the sugar I'm using in, in, for, for, the, for, the, for the loaf. And then, um, again, if for every half cup of fluid, it's, it's about a, it's about a cup of flour roughly. So, um, if you use if you use two cups, then it's about in other words, if you use two cups total of, of, of fluid, then then it's about four cups of, of flour. So. You don't want to use more than four cups in this tiny amount. Three. I'm probably just going to start out with like about three and a half. All right. And then, um, so you got you just put your wet and dry ingredients right into the container, and then and then just and then just push the start button. And it, it, it begins, that, that little blade begins turning and rotating and mixing all the ingredients right in your baking pan. I mean, it, it does all the work for you. You don't have to, you don't have to mix me, um, dirty any countertops or mixing bowls or anything. You just, it just does all the work right there in the machine. You just put the, in other words, this thing, this thing kind of amazes me after a lifetime of baking bread that you just put the ingredients in there and push the button and it does all the work. Um, it proofs it and everything. In other words, first it'll mix it and, 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 and then it comes up to an ideal temp temperature for proofing, in other words, for, for raising your loaf. And then, and then it, and then it automates, um, um, the blades come back on and, and knead the dough after it's proofed for a little while. So it has like a double writing process. And it makes like a, a perfect loaf of bread. With, and that's all you do is just put the ingredients in there and let them change you the work. So, um, I'll show you. It'll, it'll, it'll do this for a while where it just spins and spins and spins and spins until it makes a nice dough ball. And I'll show, I'll show that um, to you once it's done. Because at this point it's just a matter of time. So I'll stop and then I'll, I'll re-record once it's done doing this thing. And, uh, again, um, you normally have this closed. I just wanted to show you how the machine works. But, and that, and that, it mixes, kneads, and raises the dough right in the baking pan, and then bakes it right in the baking pan. And when it's done, it just slides right out easy. Like, super easy. No effort whatsoever. And it's, it's been so far, after using it a half dozen times, every time it's been totally clean. Um, so how do you need to do any cleanup in between music? Um, I don't know. I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking it because of, of, of rising food costs and everything. And uh, you can make your own homemade bread, you know. I mean, this easy. So it'll, it'll just keep, you know, again, rotating and rotating. Rotating and rotating until it makes the perfect dough ball. So at this point, I'm just going to let it do its thing, and when and when the dough ball forms, I'll show you what it looks like. After you push that button, it's, it's, it's a total of about two and a half to three hours or so, and until you're pulling out a, a fully done fresh baked loaf. I should say regarding the use of the bread machine that that you don't want to um I wanted to I did want to point out that the box is uh um stack. They've got little um plastic um separators so they won't scratch each other as you stack them and whatnot. And that fit into the screw holes. As you can see there's a little gap between the, the two. Um but but that way I've got, you know, artwork to look at that also um, store my seeds and, and my water 
and 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 the humidifier actually um is a combination humidifier diffuser, so I can put like essential oils and um, to make sure you know my apartment you know whatever smells nice, the little small living space or whatever. Um, again, when I was working, I I had some money, so I I accumulated things like that, you know, um, essential oils and whatnot and stuff. And this is in other words, you're looking at you know an entire estate consolidated down into a, a tiny apartment. So, I mean, I sold up, sold off, you know, more than 90% of my possessions to move in here. And as you can see, it's still crowded um, just because, I mean, just you can take a look at this desk. It's, it's, a, it's a large desk because it was designed for an actual house, not not a small apartment. And and any rate, I'm putting these things in my videos because um, rising rent costs, I have to start selling my possessions. Um, so, accepting offers, um, accepting offers, especially um, my artwork, like, see that rancid litho um, over the television there? Yeah, I'll put the flashlight on it. Okay. That's a, a, a limited edition um, signed um, lithograph by Rancid. And the, this is just a, pr a framed print of this. Um, I've got some other Native American art over here. Um, a framed Botticelli. The, the Annunciation, Framed Annunciation. Um, David Stat does, I've got small prints of his like that one. He does these um, landscape things. So I've got some David Stats. I've got uh, oh, a, a Salvador Dali print of the Crucifixion. If you've ever seen Salvador Dali's perspective of the crucifixion, it, instead of instead of it being from the perspective of of us of us down here on Earth um, looking at looking at the cross, it's more like from the perspective of heaven looking down at at his crucifixion. I actually really really like that piece of his. I I don't necessarily like you know um, other pieces um, Dali did, but that particular piece. Of the crucifixion, I, I actually like. Um, that globe has um, inlaid um, gemstones from each of the various locations of, you know, in other words, the gemstone used for Mexico um, is, is to something that, that actually is native to, to Mexico and so on and so forth. Um, typically, they, they tried to match um, the inlaid gemstones to the uh, and it's in a brass base with a with a compass, in other words, a brass stand. Um, you can see the globe is about you know um, between two and three feet in diameter. So it's a large um, standalone globe. But this is a tiny apartment. I need to make some space, and and also um, more importantly, I, I'm rising rent costs. I need to move, so I'm I'm, I'm selling things. I'd like to of course try to keep things like you know for winter that heater and stuff like that, but. But, but like this large furniture, that the television entertainment center, even though I really like this desk, I probably need to sell it um, just to get some moving money up. And, and what I really need is because my brother is um, disabled, and, and, and currently I am too, um, is to find a, a bit of land that, that I can pull, I don't know, a trailer, an RV on, something. Um, where, um, you know, um, landlords can't drive my brother and I when we're disabled and dying out into the streets to, to suffer and die homeless. And, and so it's like, that's, that's what I really need to do. I need to find, find some land that, that I can get, um, some type of either for sale by owner or, or, um, some type of contract with maybe a, a private lender, um, so that, um, we have fixed payments that we, we know each month that, that will 
fit into our disability budget. And, and then, and then, um, and then, like I said, I can, you know, pull a manufactured home onto it. I use 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 manufactured home, trailer, RV, um, something to live in on that land. And and so typically, there's, you know, so many people that have, you know, in America, just better off that sometimes they'll buy a piece of land and and they want somebody just to hold the trailer away. But it it costs, you know, um, it depends. It depends on who you call, but roughly somewhere around five thousand dollars on average just to have a trailer hauled from one location to another, um, even if it's not very far, because just the process of hooking it up and and then and then set and then set, in other words unhooking it from all the different um, what water and sewer lines that you know um, the trailer is actually hooked up to wherever it's at presently. And then hauling it, and then unloading it, and setting it. That, it's all included in that cost, typically. And then so, so again, it, it starts for a little while. Um, it, it'll stop. It'll it'll proof for a little while, and, and then it'll stir again and until you, until it has a nice until it has a nice even dough ball. And 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 then um, and then after. It's, after it's proofed and kneaded and proofed again, then then it actually bakes just right just right in the container. So it's it's super easy. You you put the ingredients in, and out comes a loaf of bread. Um, super easy, and you don't have to do any 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 of the hand work or mess up your countertops or multiple pans and mixing bowls, containers, anything like that. It's just the mixing bowl and and the the the, the baking pan is, is the same thing. <laughs> it's great. Um, the 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 blade itself actually just pops off when you pull the loaf out, and it's embedded in in your bottom slice of bread, which I I don't mind. Um, you slice the the bottom. I usually make two loaves at a time. Slice the bottom off each one and, and then put the two ends together and it helps keep it nice and fresh over a period of time that way. Um, but I just thought, you know, if you've never seen how, how these machines work, I, I, I'm pretty impressed about how simple it is. Um, ingredients in, loaf of bread out. You know, um, pretty, pretty, pretty simple. But yeah, I, I even though I you know of course when I moved moved um down into this place I I got rid of everything I really didn't want. So it's it's not like I really want to get rid of this stuff. It's that, you know, I suppose when you're poor you don't have much of a choice if you have to move and you don't have any money to move. Um then to then to sell your the last of your possessions type thing. Um I mean, I don't know what else to do. Uh, you know, you, you're disabled. If you, I mean, if you, it's not that I'm not able to do anything. It's that it's that in a world where you know there's healthy people and and you know um, young people and so on and so forth that that there's companies typically already have their managers and not 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 necessarily, but but somebody that can't even show up on the site um, doesn't even have a vehicle. Has 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 to do project based work. I, I have to I have to come up with creative ideas. So my creative ideas was to try to do I don't know anything, um, including some of this like I said fine art, and and hope maybe somebody likes it. You know? and then if I could just you know anything to supplement my income, thousand um, dollars a month just is not enough to live on these days. And, and so it's like in other words, I I, I I'm still in somewhat of a state of shock that, that in the United States of America, and I didn't know this was the case, that if you become disabled or, or, or just, or just when you grow old, um, that, that, that you're given, um, an allocation that you can't live on, that, that, that you, you, you suffer and die on. I, I just, I just didn't, I just didn't know that was happening. See how it kicks back on? So, so now it'll, it'll kick back on and 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 re-knead and restart um, um, the ingredients until it forms a nice little loaf. Just 
it's not at this stage where, where the, the flour and stuff are, and the wet ingredients are, are um, mixed up sufficiently. See how it's starting to ball up? And, and, and then the dough pulls from the sides. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just show you. It'll, it'll just form a nice dough ball all on its own. Um, I, I just think that's an, that's, that's, that's an amazing, for me, that's like, you know, I wonder how long it took them to design that little blade in order to, in order to get, get it to mix the ingredients and, and knead the dough, um, without you ever having to do anything but put the ingredients in the machine. See how it's, you know, it's kneading it and, and, and forming a nice dough ball. I mean, it's it just, to me, after a lifetime of baking bread by hand, <laughs> I just think this thing's awesome. It's just so, I mean, especially awesome for the fact that I was able to find this um, used at, at a thrift store for $10. Yeah, so that's something I thank somebody for their donation. God bless me type thing. Um, yeah. It's forming a nice dough ball down in there. Um, you might, you know, um, take a little bit, if, if, it, if it doesn't pick up all the flour off the sides, you might take a little spatula or something and, and get it down into the dough ball or whatever. Um, but the, I found that the flour and the, and, and the, and the oil, um, coat the sides of the pan as the dough rises. And, and again, makes it so the loaf just slides right out. You know, in other words, you really don't have to mess with it once you put the ingredients in and, and turn it on. It just does everything for you. And again, I, I put in about two cups, or, and I've only put in about three and a half cups of flour, so it does look like it needs just a little bit more. You do want the, the dough to, to pull away from the side and form a nice dough ball. Um, at least I do for, for the type of texture of bread that I want. So it looks like it does need a little bit more flour, about, about that half cup. For, for this particular oven, you, you don't want to use more than four cups of flour. It actually does have a safety feature. In other words, when it's baking, if it, it, if it hits um, the point where it's at the top or whatever, um, the machine will give you a little beep and, and tell you. Um, typically, you'll have a, a solid enough top you can just cut off or something like that or whatever. In other words, if, it, if you put a little bit too much flour in, in other words, for a regular um, wheat or white bread, no more than a, a four cup loaf in, in, this, in this oven. And, and, and for dusty breads even, and you, you, you want your dry ingredients to be somewhere between three and four cups top all together. And, and then that's, that'll make an ideal loaf for this, this size, for this particular machine, this size of, of container. And, and you can see that container. See how it's round? So your your loaf comes out um, um, round, and you just I just slice it side to side, and it's perfect for making sandwiches that way. In other words, for all your round lunch meats or all your um, hamburgers, it's just just the ideal way to have a loaf, you know, for that reason. I mean, for sandwiches. And, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more flour. All right, so I added that half cup. Now you can really see how it's forming that per perfect um, dough ball. And right texture. And not too wet, not too dry. Um, kneading it right in the machine. Um, pulled away from the side. That, that's that's about the right dough texture for a loaf right there, and um, at least the way I like mine. 
I need this fan spray. So, um, that, that's a four cup loaf. Um, we'll, we'll see how much it rises. And, and, and I'm hoping that it won't, <laughs> it won't it'll be too big. I'm thinking that's about the um, perfect size. In other words, you, you should follow, if you're a professional baker, see, I've, been, I've been baking my whole life and cooking my whole life, so I always tend to think that I just can just look at things after years and years of, of doing the same thing over and over again and tell how much it is just by looking at it. Um, but you, you you always should if you're, how do you say, if, you're, if you want to be really precise in, in your results and consistent, you always should even if you've been doing it for a long time, still use measuring devices in order to get the exact consistency, you know, time and time again. But again, you know, like I said, I've been doing this my whole life, so so I just I just look, you know, and it's like that. That's 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 how it's supposed to work, right there. You know, a nice go ball that just just being turned and needed and. And, and not sticking to the sides anymore, it's all pulled together and, and consolidated as one dough ball. But again, you only want to use maximum about two cups of, of wet ingredients, really about one and a half cups for, the, for this little machine. And so that way you only use about, if you use one and a half cups of wet ingredients, then you'll use about three cups of flour maybe a little bit more and that'll make sure that it's gonna um, bake in this in this tiny container. Um, it's an adequate loaf it's you know the last a, a simple person like myself a, a week or two. So uh, well it depends. Sometimes if this is all I'm eating to spread, well then it won't last that long but but you know most of the time I'll have something else to eat besides the spread. Okay, that little that little bee. That's when if you're making like a cinnamon raisin egg bread, that's when you can add your raisins and things like that. Solid ingredient for it. You're not over mixing your raisins and crushing them or anything. You're just they're just they're just get needed right into the to the loaf at this ideal time. So it lets you know if you're making that kind of bread that that that's when you want to add those little solid ingredients type like raisins or whatever for for a cinnamon raisin bread. But this is just again a regular um, um, wheat wheat bread and um, unbleached flour, so so I don't need to add anything. What for you've already seen? Just the water, the milk, a little bit of butter and oil, salt, sugar, and flour. So yeah, see that dough ball is just perfect. It's just all consistent, um, totally mixed, and and the mixing process actually evenly. You can see that little little fine film of of, of flour. It's just perfect because it just enables the loaf to just slide right out. Um, super easy when it's all done. But anyway, what I'm getting at is you put the ingredients in, and the machine does everything for you. Um, you don't have to touch anything or or knead or I know some people actually like it, like the whole hand process of kneading and sealing the dough and squeezing it and, and you know, pounding on it and beating on it. Depending on what type of bread you're making, whether it's, you know, I don't know, a baguette or, or, or you know, whatever, Italian or French loaf or whatever type of, of whatever bread you're making. A lot of people love the tactile feel of the dough and, and the whole hand process. I'm just saying if, if, if you're elderly and you're tired, and all you have to do is put the ingredients in the machine, and the machine does everything for you. Especially if you can find this thing, um, one of these, at a thrift store, for like I did, cheap. You know, five, ten bucks or something. Great little machine for, for ten bucks. Um, I don't know what they cost me, but I just figured, well, Ten bucks, and, and I figured if it didn't work well, you know, I'm out ten bucks. But 
heck, man, when you can spend 10 bucks on just two loaves of bread, I figured it was worth the risk. And, and so far, I've been overjoyed that I got it. Grateful. People hear what they want to hear. Um, I really am a gift from God, and so are you. And, and I really do have skills, talents, and abilities, including um, 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 an educational background. I taught, I taught adult education, basic education, for a number of years. I shouldn't say profit, but assisted in teaching adult basic education um, to, um, to convicts, to Spanish speaking. In other words, I taught English as a second language. And in all, in all the years I tutored, I got reviews by the supervising teachers. And, and I even had men like, man, thank you. You know, um, you know, I tried to learn this from other people, but you made it easy. Thanks a lot. And in other words, I, I, I know how to break things down for people so that they can see the steps and, you know, in the processes. Now, when I was, when I was younger, I, I actually used to hate to have to, to, to tell, um, the teachers that I knew the steps because for me it was just a waste of time and energy when, when I knew that they knew the steps and they were just trying to make sure I knew the steps, but, but the way I thought I could just do everything in my head. And so, for me the steps were, I don't know, not essential type thing. Um, but, what I, what I ended up learning was, was that um, not everybody thinks the same. And, and as such, it's important to know the steps just so you can tell other people, you know, um, different ways of, of, of arriving at a solution. And, 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 to, and, and to never try to get trapped into, into thinking only one way of, of, of when you're trying to arrive at a solution. In other words, Something that I recognize as, as a facilitator and as a manager and as a leader is that, is that um, you need to open up suggestion boxes um, to your employees and, and, and reward them for any suggestions that um, end up, how do you say, um, bettering the company, bettering its products and services, um, making it more profitable. And in other words, don't always think that the CEO and, and the managers and everything and know, know everything there is to know. When they're not daily hands-on in the company performing different duties and work. So one thing I found about managing people is that people are, are not, how do you say, um, as whatever, mentally challenged or, 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 or as, as, as so many companies treat their employees as. In other words, just because somebody's um, operating as a, as a, 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 a stalker, you know, and I'm, and I'm not talking about stalking like, you know, sexual predator stalking. I'm talking about a stalker that stalks the shelves of products and goods. Stalker. Just because somebody's a stalking shelves or, 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 you know what I mean, arranging items, you know, for purchase, does not mean that 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 they're they're only a robot that, that that's all they can do and that's all they can think. You understand? And that's why, why companies, large and small, need to um, let their employees know that they're valued and, and that their opinions and suggestions are valued and, and that if they come up with a suggestion or, or of any kind that, 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 I don't know, improves efficiency, reduces um, how do you say, difficult labor tasks, lifting, um, whatever. People that are actually doing the work um, are daily thinking to themselves, man, if only, they, if only they do it this way, it'd be so much better. And what I'm getting at is, is CEOs are so detached in, in big offices buildings from the multinational corporations that they never, they never get to ground floor anymore, and they never listen to even teenagers that they might hire. Um, believe it or not, anybody that's doing hands-on work, and for the most part, will be sitting there thinking to, my, to, to themselves, you know, dang, man, they should do it this way. And in other words, 
for any given task or, or any given pro problem, there is a myriad of ways to look at that. So when I'm making these videos, I'm saying, look, this is how I would solve homelessness. I'm not saying that that's necessarily the way mankind should agree to do it. I'm, I'm just saying that, look, we have a real problem. At this point, we, we all need to be speaking up on how to solve it and, 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 and unite and, and put, put good ideas, even if they're different ideas, as long as they're all good ideas that actually do solve a problem, and put them into place. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm an ideal facilitator, because I realize that, that God um, has hidden gifts, talents, and abilities in each of you, and that if you're doing the work, and, and the actual work, then nobody knows um, more about that job on a daily basis than what you're doing, because you're, you have hands-on um, experience um, hours each day doing that thing. Now, um, managers and stuff that worked up through the ranks and did those things in the past might think that they've already arrived at the best solutions and that it should always be done such and such a way. And, and that type of rigid thinking that is never open to, to new suggestions um, actually um, hinders um, innovations, inventions, and, and, and progress of mankind. And that's why I'm saying if, if, if there's problems before your eyes that are not getting solved, especially like people starving to death in the streets, that's when you, the people, have to have to speak up. And that's why I'm speaking up. I'm not saying, like, hey, look, I'm the brightest apple on the tree or anything like that. I'm saying that God has blessed me, and over time my life experience has taught me that you have to value everyone, that you have to, you have to, you have to let them speak up. You have to encourage them and empower them to be part of, um, how you say the progress of not only their own life and their own destination, but but that of all the rest of us. And and some people will have great ideas, and some people will have some silly ideas or whatever. And and that and that at the same time, you just don't ever discourage them from coming up with more ideas. You understand? You you just be like, well, you know, I've thought about that already. Um, and, and actually I might have even tried, tr sometimes I, I used to do that with my, my own, own um, co-workers in my company. Um, I call them co-workers because, like I said, I always believed that they were working with me, not for me. That they were actually working for themselves as, as subcontractors. But I told my subcontractors, look, if, if you come, come up with an idea or you have an idea um, to do something a better way, um, hey, Speak up. Let me know. Um, and um, and and so on. And so sometimes they they come up with an idea, and I'd be like, Yeah, I already tried that. And in fact, I um, one of the things was you know um, uh, power tools on the trucks uh, for assembly and disassembly of, of all of all the uh, um, goods. And I said I tried two ways of, of handling that situation. I, I tried to put um, a foreman that had to sign a contract that he was responsible for inventorying the truck uh, and its tools and, and blankets and everything for relocation and that any um, tool blanket, you know, um, not um, present on the truck at the end of any job he would have to pay for out of his own salary. So I tried to, I tried to, I tried to do it that way in order to ensure that tools and Blankets weren't disappearing off the truck one way or another, either being lost, forgotten, whatever. In other words, I tried to say, look, as a foreman, it's your responsibility to take inventory and to sign, sign off on, on the inventory of the truck at the beginning of, of each day and at the, at the end of each day. And if that inventory in any way, shape, or form is, 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 is not um, the same as the start of the day, at the end of the day, then um, you're you are responsible for for uh, the losses. I tried to do it that way, and 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 then I tried to do I I, I tried to do it where where everybody was was responsible um, for having to any time they used any of the items um, sign you know off for um, whatever whatever tool they had taken off, and that, that they were responsible as an individual to to put the tool back in. I tried buying kits that actually showed easily just by opening up the kit and looking 
we could see the, the gap of, of anything that was missing so that you knew you had to go back in the house and find the tool. I try all kinds of things to try to, to, try to minimize the fact that, that tools, blankets, materials kept just disappearing off the truck one way or another. And, and, and that, that was, that was preventing me from being able to give them raises because I had to keep buying the same tools over and over and over again. And so finally the, the, the end solution was, if you want to work for my company making X amount of dollars more than all the other companies are paying, you have to supply your own tools. No excuses. And then there was never any more problems. If, 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 if the guy didn't supply his own tools, he didn't work. And, and people, when they have to take, buy their own tools and take care of their own tools, stop leaving them or losing them or stealing them. Everybody's got, got their own tools on them and everybody's responsible for their own tools. So that's what it finally had to come down to for me, even though I didn't want to do that because I know poor people can't afford to buy their own tools. So some people that wanted to work and, and said, well, I don't have those tools, then I offered, you know, okay, well, as part of your wages out of your first few jobs, um, you're going to, I'll give you this kit, but, but it's going to come out of your wages, you know, out of the first week or whatever. And this is your kit. These are your tools now to do this job right. But one of the things I was never able to solve was, was the fact that there's just so much um, imperfection and so much corruption pervasively that there's always a certain amount of, 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 of loss just to operate any business. And, and it's due to human error and human corruption, evil. And so the losses can be greater or smaller, and it's hard to mitigate those losses. But it's why, it's why companies, after a while, um, value um, any, anybody that's, that's dependable and honest. I mean, you might not even have any skills, but, but, but if you can somehow ensure that company that you're dependable and honest, um, that, that is starting to become a highly valuable um, um, character trait, a highly employable character trait in all fields. Dependable and honest. Now, of course, um, if on top of that you become competent and, and and not just dependable and honest, but, 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 you, you, but that you become skilled and proficient, well, then you really become a valued member of, of any company that's well-managed and well-run. Um, dependable, honest, competent, skilled, professional. That, that's, worth, that's worth money. That, that's worth compensation. And that's why you have to get to the point where you, where you um, choose to um, find a good company and, and do your best every day to be loyal, dependable, and, and to become as skilled and, and proficient at what they're asking you to do as possible. And, and, and when you demonstrate those kinds of qualities, if the company is managed correctly, and they'll notice you and value you, give you raises, and, and if possible, promotions. Because it's, it, that type of character trait is becoming harder and harder to find. And it's due to... Um, Children not being taught in public school that there is a God, and that God looks down upon you, upon you lifelong and will hold you accountable for your thoughts, words, ways, and deeds. And assets they, you know, are, are losing proper values. And so they're thinking, well, I'm not being paid enough, so I'll just take this. And then so there's employee theft. And then so they, they don't understand why they can't get raises. When, when they actually stole from the company that would have given them a raise had they not stolen from the company. You understand? Um, kind of focused on those boxes just because, I don't know. I, I, I just want you to understand that, you know, um, if, if you have to just look at, at, a, at a blank wall as opposed to fine art, that you can either create yourself or, or, or help, help a starving artist. Get, and get some of it for yourself. There's a lot of, um, very talented, um, people. Um, again, 
I'm not saying these are any kind of masterpieces, but but for my for my first composition on on canvas of mixed media. Now this is something that I'm hoping I can take with me to my I suppose dying breath type thing, but that's that's what we hope. But the bottom line is the way the way our society is set up is you get to a point where if you're I don't know if the other people even notice that that you're um, getting to a point where you can't take care of yourself, they try to they try to hustle you off into hospice in your dying moments among strangers to be roughly ha handled and, and and maltreated. You know, I mean, I'm just talking about the poor. Um, it's kind of like they're like hurry up, move along, die, get out of the way type thing. And, and I don't want to be around that situation. I, I've, I've walked into hospices where people are, are patients and the staff and every, the staff's overworked. They look distraught. They look tired. Um, some of them look angry. Um, and, and, and the elderly are, are, are super sad and depressed, lonely, wishing, they're wishing that somebody, anybody would come see them in their dying moments, for the most part, even on a daily basis type thing. It's, it's their final moments on earth. And, and, and they've, they've, they've come to a point where they're like, you know, um, either fearful of death or, or, or fearful of the fact that they live the life that, that in their dying moments there isn't people that even care that, that come and visit them. And that's why God was saying that, that that's what one of the things he wants wants us to do. Is 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 he specifically says things to let you know he cares, that he is a loving, caring God. Um when he when he gives that discourse about in as much as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. And in as much as you did it not to the least of these, you did it not to me. In other words, he's saying, you know, look, I was hungry, and and you had some food, but you didn't share. And look, you know, I was I was cast into prison, and and um, feeling um, completely dejected, rejected, stomped on, um, some some even tortured and tormented, and and. You never visited me, and and I was in in the hospital um, needing help. I was suffering and dying, and you never came. You never tried at all to comfort me. So he's he's using. Specific examples of when people really need um, to know that life is more than just slavery, hardship, oppression, suffering. More, it's more than just bread and water. It's it's more than just your physical needs. That there's that there's a deep. Um, inward desire that other people um, love and appreciate you, care for you. Um, that's so absent um, today only because people are so overworked and over oppressed that they've got little time or energy um, because they're so wrapped up in their own survival and their own agendas to even think about somebody else. So, um, it's not that I don't want to visit people in those situations. It's, it's that I was so maltreated by doctors and nurses, I have so much, somewhat of a justifiable phobia of hospital-type settings now. In other words, I know most doctors and nurses, I reasonably know this, I intellectually know this, that most doctors and nurses are 
are reasonable, ethical, um, hardworking people. But the fact that some doctors and nurses actually really tried to murder me, um, uh, and, and then I found out that, it, that it's, it's far more pervasive than just my individual tragedy, that it, it makes me uncomfortable um, if I even see a medical facility. So I personally absolutely do not want to go to hospice to die. If, 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 if I'm in my dying moments, uh, personally, I prefer something like, um, let's see if I can show you. Uh, see if this thing will work. Now, it won't let me minimize um, the screen, but but see at the edge there, and, um, there's green grass and, and trees and, and a lake. To me, and, and that... Over there is a, a wood deck, a little cabin by a, by a small lake. To me, I don't know about others, but but there's a little canoe there, a little boat, a little fishing boat. I don't know what others want, but that's what that's what I that's what I was working for. I mean, personally, I was trying to get to the point where I could I could afford that that little tiny patch of dirt, um, even with a small cabin. Um, spend spend my final days, you know, in prayer, meditation. Uh, for the world, uh, for everyone, and taking a little bit of breathing the fresh air and smelling um, the wildflowers. I sure as heck don't want to be um, um, reduced to dying among strangers in in a, in a poor hospice that that they're trying to just, you know, hasten your death because somebody else needs your bed to die. And that that's not that's not what I want. I really don't. So frankly, you know, if, if I could do it for people, I I I'd have um, assisted living facilities instead of being in metropolises and horrific settings like that, I'd, I'd be like, look, most people have been crushed their whole life, worked hard their whole life. You, can't you give them a few days, even if something that wonderful? And you can't, you know why? Because wealthy people own all the land. And so poor people just, they just dream. At least in this life. this life. Heaven above. God knows how he made you. So I know in heaven I got all kinds of places like this to, to enjoy. Yeah, forever. Now, a lot of people think that um, people just wish that to be true or hope that's true. Um, but I'm somebody that suffered so much that 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 God took my spirit and showed me for sure that's true. There is a very real realm 
um, in the Bible called paradise. God calls paradise. There is a very real realm. And I'm telling you, make your peace with God so you get to go there. Where all this terrible suffering is over. And you can fish as much as you want. So, I might not be able to afford any patch of dirt like that on a small lake anymore, but, but I'm trying to sell my stuff so that I can get a patch of dirt anywhere where, where some landlord isn't threatening to kick, to kick me out to die in the streets or to raise rents on me beyond anything I can possibly afford. I wish, I wish there were laws prohibiting it. I just can't hardly even believe that, that modern civilization lets other people on their whim just murder other people. And it is murder. How is turning out a, a poor, elderly, disabled, dying person out into the streets not murder? How, how is that not murder? Now, maybe you can tell yourself that it, it isn't murder, but um, um, prove it. Put yourself on the streets if you're elderly. If you're rich and, and turning out your poor tenants out into the streets almost to die, how is that not murder? Uh, forgive me for throwing in serious topics. I don't mean to bring any, anybody down. I just, I just find it so hard to believe that this is modern civilization. So see how it's proofing now? It's proofing all on its own. Um, in other words, the oven actually rises to an ideal temperature to proof, the, proof the, 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 the bread for you automatically in this little, in this little oven. Um, and all, and all you, like I said, all you did was, you saw me, all I did was put in the ingredients and push the button. It, it's that simple. So, um, I, I, I know there's people out there that are so poor and, and people in the world that have never seen one of these are, are you know, I'm not trying to torture or torment you or, or anything like that. I'm just trying to say if you happen to be somewhere where you can get one of these, you, you might want to if you're on a fixed budget because uh, flour is cheap still. Um, and it's super easy. Any, anybody could do it. Anybody that can put ingredients in a pan and push a button. All right, so again, this has been proofing a little while. See how it rises nicely? So it, it's just automated. It's just in the baking process. And you can see it, it, it proofs at an ideal temperature. It makes a, a, a nice, full, um, aerated, beautiful loaf of bread. And, 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 then, and then after it's done proofing, the oven will rise to a baking temperature all on its own. Again, you just put the ingredients in and push the button. That's it. And then it does everything for you. Um, mixes it, kneads it, proofs it, and bakes it all at once. I, I really like it. I, I think it's great. I'll, I'll pull the loaf out when it's done, but as you can see, when you slice it, it makes a, a perfectly round um, piece of bread. And, and so you can just, um, if you have lunch meat, you know, um, put your lunch meat, you know, right in, right in between your round bread and, you know, you don't have to cut it. Uh, it's perfectly shaped, perfectly sized. Um, for, you know, your average store lunch meat. In this case, today I'm blessed to have some butter, so I'm having a butter sandwich. But, um, 
but you can always, like I said, have, you know, whatever lettuce, tomatoes, you know, some meat, and whatever you have on hand, have whatever sandwich you want to make. And, but anyway, you can see it. it. Makes a nice round, you know, um, loaf for perfect sandwich bread. Um, I like it um, because um, um, it's not like Wonder Bread where you where it crushes down to nothing, you know, where there's no substance to it. It's it's, it's still plenty aerated, but at the same time, um, it's it's denser. And I think it tastes better. And in other words, there's more to a very thin slice of the sandwich bread than than to a, a thick slice of Wonder Bread because there's actually more um, material content in each slice, more flour and ingredients in each slice. So more flavor, and again, you can see a medium crust. So it, it actually makes a really nice loaf of bread and perfect for sandwiches. Anyway, when it's all done baking, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how easy it comes right out of the oven and how clean it is and everything, and it's ready for your next loaf. All right, so um, two and a half hours, three hours roughly have passed. Um, all you do is you you take it and it it it, it it sits on one single washer in the middle to prevent the ingredients from going down in the heating elements. And so you always want to make sure that you put this in the oven correctly and that it's locked in place and sealed. So you just turn it to unlock it like I just did. And you just turn it slightly like that, and it locks and, and it lifts right out. And, and then you just, you know, um, take your bread and, uh, and just turn it upside down. It, it slides, slides right out. And, and you can see it's like totally clean. You know, see, so I mean, you don't even have to do anything. Um, it's got a little bit of moisture in it, but that's, that's not going to hurt anything. Again, this, in the baking process, it kills any microbes. So then you just kind of put it back in, in the machine and, and, and twist it and lock it in place, ready for its next use. And then in, in the meantime, um, you've got a you know, perfectly round um, loaf of, of homemade bread ready to go. Um, the bottom here has the little... Um, um, piece that, that, that stirs, you know, the actual loaf and mixes it, and it, it cooks right into the bread, and you just cut the bottom slice off and pull it out and then put it in the machine again. Nice, you know, um, golden crust, and, you know, perfectly cooked, and round, perfect for sandwiches. You know, that easy. You just put the ingredients in the machine and push the button. Good to go. Um, here I'll, I'll, I'll slice a little bit because it's, it's still warm. So this is, you know, not hot anymore. It's, it's had plenty of time to cool. So I'll just show you that, you know, the little piece that, that comes out on the bottom after you slice it. the bread is it's nice and dense um, still has plenty of aeration and um, this this piece you know just comes out of the bottom and uh, it's um, non-stick so super easy to clean up uh, what I normally do is I just soak it in some water for a little bit and then just just hand wash it and put it back in but you can see the design of it it's got a little bend on the flange and that actually goes up and it catches the dough as it spins around and around and around and that keeps it tumbling and mixing. So that's a, that's a real clever design for just um, getting a, a rota rotating piece to, to actually turn the dough from the very bottom and keep kneading it and everything. But, so that's the piece of, and, and you have homemade, you know, warm, fresh, um, Nicely dense 
on the Sanskrit. Put a little bit of butter on and get the dough, right? Give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord for our daily bread. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, like I said, I normally um, bake two loaves at once. That way I can, when I cut off the bottom to pull the blade out, and I push the, the two ends together, and that keeps um, both loaves fresh for like, you know, a week or two. And uh, I just wanted to point out, you know, um, that, you know, you don't want to um, use more liquid than just what comes to the very, you know, top of that blade. That, that's that's about one and a half cups total. And, and that, that makes the perfect amount for this little machine. You, you use anywhere between three and four cups, typically right around three and a half cups of flour for, for one and a half cups of, of liquids like that. So I'm just, again, I'm just letting the the yeast bloom and, and then and then I'll just add the, the dry ingredients flour salt salt sugar and let the machine push the button and let the machine do its thing so it's that easy you know put the ingredients in push the button I, I just I, I personally this is this is one of the um, modern small appliances I'm actually liking <laughs> Some, a whole bunch of them just break or fail. I, I've only used this a few times, so I mean, well, you know, a little bit more than a half a dozen times so far, but so far, it works like a champ, you know? Super easy. So again, I try to use unbleached flour, and the more flour is processed these days, the worse it is, but but it's the it's the corporate process, the corporate farms that are um, spraying herbicides and pesticides, especially right before harvest, on 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 the crops that are causing them so many of these days to have what they're calling allergic reactions to gluten. Now I'm not saying there are no gluten allergies. I'm not saying there are not people that are sincerely allergic to gluten. I'm saying that some people think they're allergic to gluten and, and what they're actually experiencing is adverse side effects to, to corporate farming pro processes that are, are putting toxins in our flour these days. So I actually really don't like um, to eat um, bread anymore made by anything but, you know, organic um, a flour. But, but organic flour is like four to five times and sometimes ten times more expensive than all-purpose flour. So like somebody educated like myself or, or, or who cares about his his own health and wellness and is trying to get well um, is reduced on disability to below poverty level income to the point where we know that we're having to eat things that are not necessarily good for us. In, in other words, we know that we're not being given a choice as poor people, but to kill to kill ourselves prematurely with toxic food. And I don't know what to do but to speak up. You're left with a choice: um, die quicker um, by starving yourself to death because you can't afford high-quality nutritional food that's organic and and free from herbicides and pesticides and and all the corporate monocultures, genetic modified um, franken food, and so on and so forth, and all of the processing that, that that makes them even more toxic. But you you have to choose, you know. It's like, well, do I not eat anything? Or do I eat the food that I know is not even that that good for me anymore? And, you know, you know you're cutting you know you're cutting your life shorter, apart from a miracle from Almighty God. But I'm just saying if you make your own bread and can't afford it, get get organic flour. And do your own research. Make your own decision. But I recommend getting organic flour um, certified. In other words, try to know where, where, where the crop is grown and, and who's growing it and, and the whole process um, from the time um, the wheat emerges from the ground to the time the grain's harvested. So... It's real simple, you know, you, you put in one and a half cups of, fl of fluids, um, half milk, half water typically, and, and a little bit of, 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 of oil or butter, and then um, and you're, 
dry ingredients. And for, and for every, like I said, you know, every half cup of wet, you know, one cup of, of dry. So one and a half cups of fluid, three cups of flour, roughly three to four. Measuring, measuring cup, so it's three quarters of one, some for four, and some for three. And plus, I didn't fill up a couple of them all the way. So then, again, just push the button in. Away it goes. Doing its thing. Yeah, you can just look at it and see that it has too wet, not enough flour. So you just add, you just add some more. It's that simple until it's until it's the right consistency. So see when it see when it balls up and pulls away from the side and doesn't have you know a super wet sheen to it anymore. That's about that's about the right consistency. So one and a half cups of fluid, somewhere between three and four cups of flour. Alright, so I'll just let that do its thing. And again, praise the good Lord for giving us this daily, daily, our daily bread. Um, again, um, nothing in creation is natural, folks. Everything before your eyes is supernatural, not just in origin, but in essence. So always thank the good Lord for your food. It, I mean, be grateful, right? You don't want to be starving to death, right? So always thank him. Just be grateful. All right. So like I said, I, I, I normally bake two loaves at once in a day. And so you can see the second loaf with a nice, smooth, round, crisp. Now the other one, um, because I ended up using a little bit more of the pork of the flour, the reason why it didn't come out all smooth and round, even though you saw it pretty smooth and round, was because um, it was it was rising so much so that it was getting to the point where it's um, starting to touch um, the hot sides and I didn't want I didn't want the crust of the bread to end up burning so I actually used the spoon and whatnot to to push the um, dough back back to um, the, the container to keep it from getting the sides and, and, and burning the crust and smoking and stuff. Um, but this one, you know, had had the proper amount of flour and of three and a half cups and see how it just, I mean, it comes out um, looking for it. So it's just finished baking, so it's still a little hot. So I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it cool down, but, but it's that easy to, to bake a homemade loaf of bread and, and, and perfectly, you know, look at 
it looked like golden color in that crust that was crowd on that mouth. I mean, it came out, came out totally perfectly. It's all timed and everything for you. It, it's all programmed to the right temperature. And again, you just put the ingredients in and push the button. It's going to be easier. You know, isn't that a nice, nice crust? This golden crust. I mean, for just putting the ingredients in and and and, and punching a button to get that quality of loaf out consistently is, is nice. Mm -hmm. 